For all our reliance on human ingenuity, a number of scientists and engineers are learning design secrets that might be best described as second nature. Faith Saley shows what we mean. <laughs> Blink and you'll miss it. Oh. The frog tongue is incredibly fast. Uh, it can reach uh, accelerations up to 12 times the acceleration of gravity. Uh, to put that into perspective, uh, astronauts going up into space experience two to three times the acceleration of gravity. To catch a glimpse of a frog tongue in action, you have to be pretty sharp or determined, so both of which of might describe Alexis Noel, a bioengineer frogs, at Georgia turtles, Tech University. Snakes. So you can imagine these extreme accelerations that are happening, happening to the insect as it's being yanked back into the mouth, and yet this adhesive on the tongue is still able to maintain a grip. Noelle's research into that sticky stuff, frog saliva, began when she stumbled across a video that had gone viral. And I actually ran across this really funny video of this bullfrog uh, trying to eat insects off of an iPhone screen. Of course, they're fake insects and they're scrolling down the screens. And we thought it was hilarious. And um, so we started asking these questions like, how is this frog tongue so fast and so sticky? And like, how does it catch these insects in the blink of an eye? Being a mechanical engineer and um, dabbling in, in fluid mechanics, we're like, oh, this is a really interesting adhesive question. Noelle hopes that understanding the mechanics of frog saliva could lead to the development of futuristic adhesives. And if that seems far-fetched, then welcome to the world of biomimicry, where scientists look to nature for innovations. The shape of Japan's bullet train, for instance, was inspired by the shape of a kingfisher's beak. These windmill blades were modeled after the fins of a humpback whale. But the most ubiquitous biologically inspired innovation of all might be in your closet. In 1941, Swiss engineer Georges de Mestral went for a hike in the Alps and noticed the way burrs adhered to his clothing. Today, the hook and loop fastening system most of us call Velcro is used in thousands of products. It's actually a new way of inventing. And so chemists and designers and architects and engineers, when they have a problem, they ask what in nature has already solved this problem. If there's one person to thank for the popularity of biomimicry, it would be Janine Benyus. You know, the core idea is that life's been on Earth 3.8 billion years, and that's a lot of R&D. Benyus popularized the term two decades ago in her book. You know, NFL helmets are based on how the woodpecker's skull. What? Yeah, the woodpecker has a very particular skull and beak Just spend some time with her at her home in Montana, and you get the sense nature has taught her to see the world a little differently. When I look at a tree, I think now that it's pretty amazing chemistry operation going on, right, silently. Once you start thinking this way, you realize that, that nature is full of technologies. If you think of technologies as just tools for living. But while the scientific field might be new, there's nothing new about being inspired by nature. We need new ideas, you know. And, and, but, and we don't but what need... you're saying is the newest ideas are the oldest ideas. That's, you know. And they've been there all along. Exactly. By one estimate, biologically inspired innovations could contribute $425 billion to the country's gross domestic product by 2030. You put porcupine quills in your face. Yeah, as an example, I mean, we like to do from time to time some self-experimentation and really get a sense for, you know, what it is that we're working with. It was porcupine quills that pointed scientist Jeff Karp towards a new design for a medical staple. So it was known at the time that quills have these backwards-facing barbs. When you try to remove the quill, the barb catches on the tissue fibers and then kind of displays out to the side, so it's even grabbing even more. Um, and that's where it gets its incredible gripping force. And so this gave us inspiration for a new staple. At his lab in Boston's Brigham and Women's Hospital, Carp is, is creating new medical death. devices using some old technology, very old technology. Slug slime was a starting point for a medical glue that works in wet environments. 
This is incredibly strong. It's, it's holding bone together. The way jellyfish tentacles fan out to ensnare plankton inspired a filter to capture cancer cells in blood. There's literally, you know, hundreds of millions of years of research and development that's happening all around us. And if a creature or a plant is not able to come up with a solution, then it becomes extinct. And so, in essence, we're surrounded by solutions, which I see as ideas for solving problems. Can our technologies be as elegant and as graceful as those in the natural world? And if we hold ourselves to that standard, if we literally take the natural world as our standard, it really ups our game. <laughs> I mean, it's something to aspire to, but it's, it already exists.